What's up, After Buzzers? We are here with a brand new panel for Good Girls Revolt, and we are not talking about one, but two episodes each week, so stay tuned. You're tuning into the destination for TV superfan discussion, After Buzz TV. And now, let the buzz begin. I always have to, like, pause for <laughs> musical. <laughs> I like this one. Classics. Oh, I didn't even know the song. I'm out, I'm out of the loop. What's up, everyone? We are here talking about the new Amazon show, Good Girls Revolt, and it's actually based on a book by Lynn Povich. Did you guys know this? I actually did not know that this was based off of a book. It's based on a book. I read that today. Cool. Yeah. yeah, me, yeah, not me gonna too. Lie. <laughs> me too. I'm not going to lie either. <laughs> I am your host, Abby Vega. You can find me on Twitter and on Instagram at underscore Abby Vega. And I've got a lovely panel of ladies. Where can they find you? Hi, guys. I'm Tara Erickson. You can find me on Twitter at the Tara Erickson. Hey, guys. I'm Joel Monique. You can find me all over the internet at Joel Monique and every week at blackgirlnerds.com. And I'm Marissa Serafini. You can follow me on Twitter at Serafini TV. Okay, so before we dive in, just in a couple words, overall thoughts of the first two episodes. Love. I saw the pilot when it first came out like a year ago, and I've been anxiously awaiting a second episode, and now we have a whole thing to watch. And it's very hard not to binge every single yeah. episode. Right, it's a lot of self-control. I think it was fun, quirky, and sassy, especially for that time period. Yeah. Yay, women. Those are my two words. <laughs> that is perfect for yeah. this show. I know, I think it's like a perfect mix of comedy and, you know, touching on those bigger issues as well. Yeah. So I think they did a good job with that. So let's dive into the pilot. Yeah. yeah. Fun stuff. So it kind of, the, the first main thing that I noticed, obviously, they set up how the women are down, you know, in the pit, while the, the men are a little escalated. Literally uh -huh. sitting Based over like, with that yeah. galley view of them just to lord over. Uncool. Yes, they are <laughs> actually lower than the men in space. Um, and the biggest confrontation that first happened, I guess, was Sam and Jane getting the story over Patty and Doug. I'm good. It's going to take a while to get the yes. names. It's a lot but of what, did, what did you guys oh, no. think of that? Because clearly Patty was way more knowledgeable on the situation. Yeah, I feel like Patty is in one of those um, classic situations where uh, she doesn't really care to uh, dress or address the job as it stands currently. She's looking to change the field. And I think that because of the way she presents herself, a lot of people are like, "There's, you're so cute with your hair and your mini skirt. Like, be a doll and get us coffee as opposed to you really know about this counterculture life and our magazine could probably use a kick of youth. Um, I don't really see her for what she's capable of yet. So I was a little disappointed in the guys, but also time period. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She's like a little too hippie for all those suits in there. She is very hippie. I love her. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I was, I, I kind of agree. Like, she's more progressive than a lot of the women back then in that time, seems like. And she's yeah. very outspoken, which is kind of uh, not of the norm. Yeah. of that, that type of environment, too. And I liked it. I was like, she already established she's a strong woman who has strong opinions and already has set for the audience who's watching, like, this is what's wrong in this environment right now. And she's already going to be the one to go against the mold. And I like that. Yeah. And another thing worth mentioning, her and Doug, Doing more than it. just more than just <laughs> researcher and reporter. Hey. Because hey. she got interrupted. That's how that whole confrontation started to begin with. So that's definitely worth mentioning, definitely because you see a lot between them in the first two episodes in that relationship. Um, so now we get Nora introduced as Yay. the new researcher with Gabe, who is going to be the new reporter. What were your first thoughts on her? I loved it because Nora Ephron, I mean, she's a real person in real life and like I was doing a little bit of research on it uh, Nora Ephron did actually work at Newsweek but they mm -hmm. it kind of accelerated the time I think we uh, read the she, same article she worked like yeah. four years before this time that of the actual show and I like I really liked it because it really brought like real people from the real world into this and just made it relatable made it understandable I like what the show creator had to say about it um, when asked Dana Calvo uh, was asked why you know would you accelerate the time and she was saying that uh, you know I knew Nora Ephron we were friends and she was just an inspiration to every woman that she met and if you knew Nora Ephron's career she did Sleepless in Seattle she wrote and directed it uh, you've yeah. got mail it's complicated a lot of your favorite classic rom-coms are Nora Ephron films and it's really cool it's complicated it's Nancy Myers 
Oh, I'm so sorry. Thank you for that interaction. <laughs> um, she, but she's just uh, kind of this towering figure, and it's really cool to uh, get to see her shine in like a real kind of setting, especially the all the little tips she gives everybody. Like, oh, I know exactly where you can go for this. You're like, of course that's Nora Ephron. She knew everything. She's like, like an evil. <laughs> Yeah, she was, like, really the only badass in that episode, in my opinion, who was like, I'm just going to voice my opinion, and this is how I roll, and you guys can deal. Which yeah. I was like, yeah, girl. Yeah, mm-hmm. she went in real hot, and I loved every second of it. And, you know, one of the first people she talks to is Cindy, and we meet Cindy, who I think might be my favorite of the girls right now. I really like her. And this conversation was crazy to me when I heard about her saying, oh, did your husband poke a hole in your diaphragm. Right. Oh my oh. god. <laughs> I was like, does this happen? That is crazy. So I kind of liked that conversation. So let's just talk about that a little bit because you kind of find out that Cindy pretty much, and I guess women of this time, their lives revolved around what their husband was doing. Yeah. Which is mm-hmm. very different now. What do you guys think about all that? Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I like it that the show explores that this was kind of a uh, it was both a societal construct and a, a self-made decision. Um, I like that they show that, you know, there's clearly women who were breaking the mold, but it was challenging to do so. Um, I think that's kind of inspiring when you're up against a challenge. It's like, you don't have to be confined by what tradition tells you. It'll be hard to break the mold, but it's doable. And I like that the show's kind of going in that direction, storytelling-wise. Yeah, I like her character. Um, she has a lot of room to grow. But uh, I think she's already very solid right now, and she seems comfortable in her relationship with her husband. She knows what her career is, but she's she's at that point where she wants to stick up for herself, but she mm-hmm. doesn't have the courage to fully do it yet. Yeah, yeah. I thought that's what was interesting, is even though she was sitting there talking about, oh, I was just going to work here you know, until my husband finishes school or whatever, I think you still see those glimpses of her wanting to have her career, because the thought of her being pregnant freaked her out. Like, she didn't want to be kind of in that situation. So I think that she'll be one of those characters that will grow a lot as the season progresses. Yeah. And I think you see that already in the first couple episodes. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. It's written all over her face. You're like, there is some drama that's going to go yes. down. She does not really, is not really excited or happy about, I think, exactly where her life lies at this current moment. So it's like, it could go anywhere to where she could just be like, F you all and yeah. like be like I'm not gonna be married anymore and I'm never having children I would or love to see her. Or yeah, she's a wild like, card. Yeah, she's you know a what wild I mean? card. Like for it could sure. go wherever. Yeah. yeah. And her husband, so if she got divorced, I'd be really excited about it. Yeah. She's a terrible yeah. human <laughs> being. Poking a hole, that was that was nuts. That was nuts. Tricking yeah. someone into getting pregnant it's is a, just a horrifying thought. Like what? No, especially when you made a deal. Like you gave her just a single year to get her stuff together and you're like, mm, that's too long for me. Yeah. I can't do it. No. And I think that kind of just shows like who her husband is. Yeah. To, to do that to her doesn't have right. the respect to yeah. actually properly start a family in that way. So Or like you have a conversation a about, hus- about it. Yeah. yeah there's right? a lot about the husband. Yeah. From that one moment. It's yeah, mm. it's a little crazy. And and speaking of women who are the opposite of married, Patty and her relationship Mm -hmm. with Doug, he kind of brings up her, like, meeting his parents, and while a lot of women would probably be very excited and flattered, she has the reversed reaction. What, were you guys surprised by this, or, like, what do you think of her and her relationship with Doug? Because she seems to be, like, on a different page than him, in my opinion. Well, they're definitely (laughs) on different pages. It's it's clear Doug is, like, ready to settle down. and I think it's cute that he wants to do that with uh, Patty, but it's clear to me that she's on a different trail. Like, she's trying to form a career, even though there's not a clear path for that, and I think that's kind of where a lot of her confusion comes in. It doesn't seem to me that she knows 100% what she wants. She obviously doesn't want to give Doug up, but she definitely doesn't want the life that he has planned. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I, felt like, uh, I felt like I saw it coming with her, just being, like, a hippie and being the one who's actually out they're exploring life and like different cultures and different people um but he's so cute though that she seems like the girl who's like but you're so handsome and cute that like what you're saying she doesn't want to give him up but like at the same time she probably doesn't really want to be locked down so i don't know yeah and i think that's also the issue it is a complicated already complicated relationship and i think the problem is that she's too independent right now for Mm -hmm. him and a little bit free-spirited and i think he's he would fit better with someone who's a little bit more subdued. 
I agree. He keeps yeah. mentioning his parents' relationship like throughout yeah. both episodes yeah. mm-hmm. and it's clear that he kind of idealized that relationship and now wants that and you are not going to make Patty a homemaker like no not anytime soon give yeah. that fantasy up now sir and i think it's <laughs> interesting too because you see obviously she ends up standing standing up ends up standing up Doug that was weird uh two times in this in this first episode and I actually really like the parallel because you see a lot of the time you see that Finn obviously doesn't see his family that often and you know he gets a little flack for it from people at work but right when you know Patty stays at work super late or stands up a date to go across the country for work it's like the end of the world for Doug, and that's not what you're supposed to do. Right. So I thought that was an interesting interesting thing. But then at the same time, I think she owed him the courtesy to go tell him, him like, herself. You definitely owed yeah, you an explanation. Send your like, friend yeah. to be like, yo, I ain't coming. Well, what? and you're not just standing him up, you're standing his parents up. Yeah. And regardless of whether you're ready for this next step, you told him you would meet his parents. Mm-hmm. And now it's going to be hard to continue to try to bring you around. Like, how do I explain this to my folks? It's not a good situation to be in. It's not a great way to start a relationship with the family. Yeah. Uh, if I mean, if you want to marry Doug, you're also getting his family, too. Mm-hmm. And that, yeah. that was not a great start. Yeah, because I think it's super, like, badass that she's, you know, going to fly across the country mm-hmm. to get this source to, you know, come forward with her name. But, you know, I don't think she was all in the right in this whole no. situation. Right. Can you do me a favor and just, like, go tell him? <laughs> like, I thought that was... Crazy. Yeah. Not as crazy as the diaphragm, but crazy. But crazy. <laughs> A little but crazy. Yeah. Look, I have mixed feelings about it. Because on the one hand, I'm like, you know, yes, you definitely owe him the courtesy of just, like, I can't make it. On the other hand, like, when do you get this opportunity again? Like, she can't miss her flight, you know, and it's a huge, huge story that she gets to be a part of and his pettiness later over the fact that she was helping another reporter Mm -hmm. and not working on their story it's like i don't get credit for anything i do so i might as well enjoy what it is i'm doing um so in a lot of ways i respect her for being like story yes gotta go um i think most of us here are like career ladies and i totally would be like if you have phones now it's a little bit easier to just make a call you can facetime it out yeah yeah Yeah. (laughs) you can be a little more polite about it but given what she had like she had to go yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I agree. And she ended up getting the source, or a source, not mm-hmm. the source she intended. And she got her to come up with a name. What did you guys think of when, you know, they tell Finn, you know, we have this name, but since they were women, they weren't <laughs> credible? I like everything about that scene because it, it worked on a, a lot of different levels, not just, uh, you know, uh, male versus female, but kind of this generation difference that we're working with now. Um, the fact that she was called Juicy Lucy and did these casts of pieces <laughs> yeah. and everyone was really upset about the, like that was the fact that made her not credible but she is of the culture like she's mm-hmm. such such a a pr- product of the music and the scene that is happening it seems like you would want to lead with that person because it kind of just makes the story a little crazier and a little wilder um, I get it because they're going against the police but if you can print an anonymous source alongside um, a source who will give you their name if the story is cooperate each other so I found it funny and I like that she called him out for it kind of sucked about his reaction though yeah he was well he ended up going with the story too which I think shows a lot about Finn as a character because you can tell that him compared to Wick Wick Wick, yeah. Yeah. Wick mm-hmm. you know you can tell that they're kind of on different pages too in a sense he's trying to go more of the you know what's hip and what's in culture whereas Wick kind of wants to stick with the traditions of it all so what do you what do you guys think of the whole Finn Finn Wick situation? I like it because it is like they're both alpha males right now that mm-hmm. are high up in that company and they challenge each other creatively and that's what I think is inter- entertaining to watch as a viewer. It really depends on like who has the ultimate say at the end and like who. It seems like they have a good working relationship, but there's already moments where they can like duke it out and have a fight or something it kind of reminds me weirdly of like commentary on like buzzfeed today buzzfeed's doing like occasionally pulitzer prize winning work as far as research and telling these stories uh other news networks aren't covering and then you know you have listicle the 28 disney princesses you want to be um (laughs) and i I think that they're kind of in a similar cultural jam of like look we we want to tell good news but we also Mm -hmm. have to sell papers um and then you know what is newsworthy is you know what's happening with the rolling stones important or is it 
more important to talk about war. I think these are valid conversations. And back in the day when you had to really choose one to market to, I think this is a really hard decision to make. Um, and I'm glad we kind of get to see why different people think different stories are valid. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I feel like Wick just wants to go with what works versus like Finn is going to go with the new ideas. But you have to take a bold step in order to see if a new idea is going to work. And Wick is like doesn't really want to. He's just stick with what works, which I get it. So I'm kind of on the on the fence of like, yeah, I kind of agree with Jim Belushi's character of like, why don't we just roll with what we've been doing? Because then I can just sit around and do the same <laughs> thing as I've been doing for the past 20 years. Yes, that's I love Finn too, and good looking dude. Yeah, he's I had, pretty, I had yeah. to say it. He's I had handsome. to say it. They had very <laughs> handsome men on this show. Mm -hmm. Also, did you guys get? I don't know if this could be completely me. I'm really weird in, about like looks that people give in shows. Do you guys get the sense that Finn is a little into Patty? Oh, hell yeah. Oh, okay. oh yeah. Okay. Oh, I have oh, that yes. written down for next. Because <laughs> yes. at one point, she's listening to music after you know uh -huh. this happens. And not only were they kind of like vibing each other, but they focused on Doug looking at them. Yes. Do you think that that's something that is going to happen? Oh, yes. Uh, yeah, they definitely set it up. And not just those two, but there's so many different office mm -hmm. relationships that mm -hmm. are, that are going to potentially happen. I Which agree. fun. Yeah, no, I loved it. Yeah, that whole look thing. It was it was real dramatic. It was a little soap opery. Like, <laughs> I was yeah. like, wow, you are laying it on thick, but I'm okay with it. But we get it. We see what's yeah. happening. Yeah, oh. totally. I know. I'm yeah. all for that. I think they'd be, oof, it'll be interesting, too. Definitely with, like, we'll talk about episode two. But, okay. <laughs> so, the, you know, in this whole last scene, like, scene when everyone's in the office, uh, they... You notice earlier Nora kind of taking the paper that Gabe turned in, yeah. and I was like, yeah. I kind of got the idea that that's what she was gonna do because she came in hot, you know, troublemaker. Mm -hmm. Just she wasn't gonna settle for just being a researcher at all. But I thought that was awesome how they set that up. How he just comes in raving about this rewrite and how good it is, and she's just like, "Thank you." And he's like, "What?" She's like, "I did that." What? thoughts on that whole thing because I thought that was so that was a great scene I loved it it was like the first moment of revolt in the show mm -hmm. I was like okay if we're gonna get a situation like this every episode I'm like I'm all in and it the fact that it was like the first moment to actually step up say her voice and because mm -hmm. she is new no one really knows mm -hmm. her so like this is who I am and like she just set this you know snowball effect for everybody else and i was like and everything she said was so on point no one could really argue against her and i'm That's like yeah go woman yeah. it's a perfect inciting incident because uh when someone's completely in the right and they're still shut down and thrown out there's no way you can't then start looking at your own situation and going well what's happening to me here and how am i being treated i'm really excited to see women kind of learn like what their rights are we get a lot of times where um the lines are already drawn but here we get to see women trying to figure out like what is what do i want my role to be as a wife or as a, a worker or um everything in between so it's been kind of especially as we see like little stuff as we get into episode two it's kind of fun to watch that dichotomy where it plays itself out yeah i agree it was one of those moments where i feel like the pet and the ladies in the show were like holy shit we can ask sorry <laughs> we can ask questions because she was the only one who was like well why because it, yep. like why just tell me flat out why and i feel like all of the women's faces were like what she just asked a question um <laughs> like it, it was it was a whole new thing where they're like this is a this is a can of worms right here question boxes is what like i feel like that they're just gonna to open it up to be like cool we can ask questions yeah, even absolutely. though she like she was like uh leaving and they might get fired for doing it um i feel like it was an inspiration to all of them yeah when they were all because she obviously just quits mm -hmm. after one day mm. right yeah yeah, yeah. 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 Single single one day yeah. she she made a pat impact when she's packing up all her stuff all the girls are just staring and just i thought that was awesome they're yeah. like she's our hero you know i think it's cool because it's just it's so hard to get one of these jobs and there are so few positions mm -hmm. for women i think the fear and like i can't quit like i'm lucky just to be here and her just shattering mm -hmm. that myth of like i'll find another job it doesn't bother me i'm going to write um and that kind of determinate like it inspired me a little bit i was like i gotta get out there i gotta do my stuff <laughs> you know what i was wondering too just now i just came to me <laughs> <laughs> so you know she comes in kind of like hot with her agenda you can tell that mm -hmm. she's you know talking to all the girls and kind of getting their thoughts. Do you think that she came in like knowing that she was gonna, cause she gives them information about that meeting. Like, do you think she had an agenda? 
I think she has an agenda with all women she meets, though. I'm okay. not sure if not it was, like, like a secret spy, like, I'm going to okay. go in and change Newsweek forever. I think that she just wants to see women liberated, and that when she sees women that are in the process of trying to do that for themselves, she's like, let me give you a hand. Okay. Right, yeah, I, I don't think she... So that the, they talk about that event, that's what she's covering when she goes out to High Ashbury to get all this information. Um, so if you were interested at all while you were watching, there's a great documentary. That's where another you need some more thing that will be cool about mm. this show is I assume you know every episode they're going to be focusing on what's you know happening in that time period. So I think that'll be kind of cool to yeah. learn about what the news was at that time. Yeah, like yeah. even the first episode covered Woodstock. I was like, mm-hmm. okay, now I know what time period yeah. we are and like what's important to them and how like certain certain things happen and like how it happened. I'm like, I really I really enjoyed that. And yeah. I actually giggled a little when she got like six packs of cigarettes for two dollars oh yeah <laughs> or something it's like crazy. whoa times oh. have changed and the thing we didn't talk a lot about jane in this first episode and kind of her setup mm-hmm. i like jane's character a whole bunch she runs that newsroom in such a like dainty southern belle kind of yeah. way mm-hmm. and it's very charming and uh affecting i think yeah, and she kind of, in the second episode, you see so much of her character. Both work very hard on their own, mm-hmm. and, like, once they're put together, they're going to have some, like, creative differences, but I think that's what also makes it interesting. I think Jane kind of shatters stereotypes, too, because there's a, a really prevalent image of the Southern Belle as being kind of uptight and bitchy um, and after herself and mostly looking for a husband. Mm-hmm. But in Jane, we clearly see a passion for the work, um but she still adheres to a lot of traditional values. So again, just a lot of dichotomies, which I think is really important when crafting female characters. Um, so I was proud, I was happy to see her. Yeah, and I love Anna Camp. Oh, she's she's adorable. She's so She's good. the cutest. She is. She like brings joy to like anything she's in, I feel like. Mm-hmm. But now let's dive into episode two, if we have nothing else from episode one. This was called The Folo, which what, do you know what that, what is The Folo? I don't know what Did I miss something? Is. Yeah. <laughs> they, they, Where they, am I? They, they mentioned one line. I think they actually pronounced it the follow. Oh. Yeah. oh. So okay, like are you on it? I'm, well. I'm researching. Cool. Let's see if we can't get some answers. All right, so this starts off, though, and they're at this meeting, and we get introduced to Eleanor, who is going to be a huge part of this. Um, and also, she is a real-life activist, mm-hmm. Eleanor Norton. I didn't know that. Played by Joy Bryant, who's yes. like amazing. She, so she's yes. awesome. So they're at this kind of like women empowering meeting. They're, are they secret meetings? I don't know. And I think it's just women gathering because it yeah. seems like this has been going on for, for some for time. For a while. Yeah. So they're at this meeting and as they're leaving, Eleanor comes up to them and pretty much says, you guys have a case here. What? Obviously this is foreshadowing a lot of what's going to happen and definitely with how episode two ends. But what are you guys thinking about all this at this point when this first happened? I like it's um, established that these girls now know what they want and they're taking the baby steps in order to like empower themselves so they can do it and execute their what they want in the end. Um, like, and I liked how it introduced Eleanor because she's going to play a big part. I just know it. Yeah. Um, but I, I like that they've acknowledged what's wrong and they want to go about and change it. Yeah, um, I was just excited to see a black lady attorney. Uh, and the time period is great. The first episode had me a little concerned. Um, just because, you know, diversity is important, especially if you're in New York and you have a lot, of, like, a lot of different types of people. And while I know that newsrooms still pretty heavily segregated, um, it was exciting to see ladies of color in episode two. So Yeah, um, we got Denise, too. Yes, we mm-hmm. do. Which is, we'll talk about I'm her excited little for little her. Bit, yes. I also have an update on FOLO. Yes. It's a journalism term that means story that follows up on a theme in a news story. Hmm. Good to know. Sweet. I'll use that in my everyday life. (laughs) Follow, the word of the day. Someone has to use it a couple times when they leave here. So also at this meeting, I thought it was interesting when Nora talks to Cindy about how she hasn't confronted Lenny. Because I liked the line, oh, I thought you could talk to your husband about everything. She goes, (laughs) she like just laughs at all. Yeah. So I thought that was interesting. And it's, I think it's kind of nice to have Nora, Nora's definitely there to, you know, get those girls to ask questions Mm. because she brings up things that I don't think they ever think about. So what, Mm. I mean, do you think it's weird at this point that Cindy can't even confront her husband about what he did? I just want a backstory for how Cindy met her husband and because they don't, there seems to be no romance in their relationship at all and she's so full of life Mm -hmm. outside Mm -hmm. of her home. 
Um, and I'm just kind of wondering what their beginning situation was. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm glad somebody's asking her to ask these questions. <laughs> like, <laughs> your husband did a pretty terrible thing to you, and you just don't even feel like you, you should bring it up. The fact that she just decided to get a new diaphragm in secret, and she's like, I'll just hide it and he'll never know. Um, it's sad. It's sad to kind of watch her go through that. Yeah, it's a scary thing to highlight because I feel like a lot of women were going through that at that time. Like, that's a normal thing. I, the first thing that she asked was, she's like, did he poke a hole in it? Like, it, that's a normal, not a normal thing, but a thing that she's like, that's probably what happened. I mean, a thing that happened enough, that's the first thing that yeah, pops in exactly. her mind. That's so I'm crazy. Like, a lot of women, this is what they're going through, and they cannot talk. They don't really have a lot of people who they talk to about it, especially if you talk about Anna, Anna Cam's character in the bathroom where they're talking about, like, <laughs> yeah. you well, know, and she's like, she's a virgin, you know, and she's like, I'm going to just, you can take this brash talk to the, yeah. the other room. Um, where I'm like, oh, man, that's how it was. What's crazy to me is those are like conversations you have in high school. Yeah, I know. Nowadays, right. And so you hear like grown <laughs> women having these conversations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's oh, so cool. like I can never find the right angle to give a blowjob. Like, uh, I liked everything. that conversation too in the the bathroom because I th I liked how it showed the dynamic between those three. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You see definitely how you know Jane's character is, and I thought it was funny to see Cindy and yes. Patty kind of like. They were in on it together, like yeah. poking fun at her, but not in a mean way. Like, not, well, I didn't think it, what did you guys think about well, it? Yeah, and it also just shows like how three women are different in their relationships. Mm -hmm. So we see Patty and Cindy, like obviously more experienced than Jane, but they all have different views on how their relationship goes with their men. Mm -hmm. And I, I think it's really funny to have that crude <laughs> together in, in the bathroom. <laughs> mm -hmm. But yeah. It, yeah, it just shows like how three are so vastly different. I also yeah. like the bathroom as a inner sanctum for women in this show. Like uh -huh. sometimes they can kind of get away with whispers in the pit, but when they have like real stuff to talk about, bathroom. we're heading to the bathroom. Um, and it kind of puts into perspective for me. I never understood like the women taking trips to the bathroom, but now I understand like you couldn't talk anywhere else. Like yeah. this is the one place safe and away from men. And it again sad, but like enlightening. Yeah. I think there's gonna be some secret rendezvous in the bathroom coming up here. Oh, pretty yeah. soon. Oh. Like, like steamy secret rendezvous or like planning like coup for the company. Clearly, they go to the infirmary yeah, if they just... need <laughs> yeah. those kind of right. rendezvous. Right. I'm right. thinking about like yeah. girl room secret meetings. That's awesome. Mm. Can we call the bathroom the war room from now? Yeah, <laughs> that's. What, I'm thinking that that's what's gonna happen because it. it's gonna go down in there. Mm. Definitely in a great way. I agree. So. Patty, after this meeting, uh, is at her apartment, and her sister shows up, super excited, 18 years old, mm. engaged, mm. and Patty's reaction <laughs> is, I mean, so what you good. expect of Patty at this yeah. point. Oh, yeah, I'm happy for you, of course. Yeah. I just feel it's such a teenage thing to be like, here are three bombs I'm going to drop on you in 15 right. seconds. I can't stay to work them out with you, though. I have to leave. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's one thing for you to be married, but your husband's also enlisting, and also you guys are demanding to get married before he leaves. Yes. And that the resolution of that is well played out, but I totally was with uh, Patty in that moment of like, what's happening? Right. Oh God, come back, yeah. talk to me. Um, but yeah, this was maybe one of the few times I will agree with Douglas where it's like, maybe just give them your yeah. congratulations. Maybe yeah. it's not your business who someone has made a very strong choice to spend the rest of their life mm -hmm. with. Yeah, yeah. I think that's the thing with Patty sometimes is sh she puts her her feelings like pushes them on other people mm -hmm. which I can understand can be frustrating from like Doug's point of view because she just keeps talking about it and he he finally does say to her you know just be happy for her this is her decision like you can't control what everyone does so I totally understood Patty in the sense like oh my gosh my 18 year old sister cannot be getting married like this quick yeah. and being concerned in that sense but I also think that she needs to maybe take a step yeah. back right like and I like this because it's even though the story takes place in the 1969 but the the theme is so modern mm -hmm. like even today we're talking about it it's like that's still relevant and that's mm -hmm. still happening with families then yeah. yeah you can have that one sibling that constantly goes or disagrees with everything you're doing but that's not your choice mm -hmm. even though you have a strong opinion that doesn't make theirs wrong and I was like, and it just shows not to jump ahead, but like when we see the whole dinner scene with mm -hmm. the family, just like so how far different she is from her family mm -hmm. and her opinions and just who she is. And like, I can see, yes, there's a big difference, but she, again, it's still family, so it just still show that love. 
Yeah, I agree. I feel like people who are a little more removed feel like they have to voice their opinion a little bit harder because they're like, I'm weird and over here and like Mm -hmm. a, Mm -hmm. a third wheel that they have to like always voice their opinion and like ask you questions and be like, what are you doing? But really sometimes it's like, yo. I also Chill. think Patty is um, not so secure in her identity. Yeah, you know, as I she agree. Presents like it's herself. new. Yeah, right? definitely. It's still, like, she treats it as though I've been doing this forever mm-hmm. and yeah. this is who I am. But you're like, girl, you have started this. Like, this has been a nine-month thing probably. Yeah. You know, like, it's still new. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. And I guess, and let's just, we can just jump ahead to that scene where she's in her room with her sister because I think you f- see that a lot there mm-hmm. when she, you know, her sister straight up tells her, hey, I know what my options are here, mm-hmm. but this is still what I want. Yeah. And I thought that was so important for her to tell Patty. Because Patty, I think, honestly thought that she just like forgot all that, you know? <laughs> but like she has a brain, she, can, she knows what her options are. And then you see kind of Patty say, I forget what she says exactly, but something about her career or how she's, what oh, it, how she thought she would be in a different place yeah. than she is now. So she you can tell that, yeah. yeah. So you can tell right here that she definitely is maybe putting on more of a front of and hiding some of her feelings. Yeah, I agree with that because um, because of that line. I think she she knows what she wants. She's not quite there yet, mm-hmm. and I don't think she's happy because she's not there yet. Yeah. yeah. I want to say a quick kudos to the production team because I felt an entire story in that bedroom. Yes. The two, bedroom, yeah. the two beds yeah. being pushed together. It's very kind of... Uh, traditional country is like lacy and very pink um i don't know like crochet home good thing and then you see some of the music and like records on the wall and you can kind of see the dichotomy between the sisters um and i just thought it was really cute it was one of the the strongest storytelling moments production designs had so far because they don't give us a lot of backgrounds about the sisters so i liked that moment yeah i hope we see more with patty and her family which i i think we will what do you guys think do you think we'll see more of the family i don't yeah, know absolutely. maybe I don't Hopefully her I, sister, at least, I, like, I, with the wedding yeah. and stuff. I think the sister, and definitely with that conversation that she had with Randy as, you know, she was going take he was taking her to the bus stop or whatever. Mm-hmm. She's like, you know, I just got to say it, like, take care of my sister. And I thought How that was a sweet moment, Randy, too. Randy to Randy is like, adorable. I'd rather leave her a widow oh, no. and take care of than a girlfriend with nothing. And well, I was like, isn't. your I wedding know. makes so much sense now. Yeah. <laughs> you should have just asked Randy. Like, that makes me Randy nervous, answers. though. Does that mean he's going to, like, die or something? Oh, yeah. I, I mean, it, it's Vietnam, and there are a lot of high death counts, and mm-hmm. we're not quite toward the end of it, because I think we're just at the end of the 60s right now. Mm-hmm. Um, so we've got a couple more years left, so it wouldn't surprise me if they went that route, but he, it totally makes sense that he's preparing for that route. Yeah, yeah that makes sense. And I guess while we're just talking about Patty, let's finish off with her. She shows up to see Doug, and I thought this was going to be, like, yeah. a great moment, and she kind of, like... For her, she let her guard down, I thought, with her feelings oh, towards totally, him and how totally. the thought of saying goodbye, that kind of broke my heart, you know, the thought of saying goodbye to you forever, just, I don't want to do that. And then he pretty much dumps her. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Did you guys see that coming? Yeah. You did. Well, they were building it throughout the whole episode yeah, of him, with him just feeling further, like, more and more distant, and then this other chick that he was kind of... Who was that chick? Uh, she's another <laughs> researcher in the <laughs> pit. She uh, was right. putting on like, the moves subtly. She's like, I see it. I see what's happening. Yeah. Uh, and I, I really don't think he's there yet. He, it's so clear to me that he, what he wants is, a, like, a home taker. A home yeah. care person. Um, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know the words. Uh, housewife. Care. There we home go. Care there we go. Home maker. Home care taker. <laughs> baker. All of the above. Uh, yeah. Um, and that's just not going to be her. And I think that there's a lot of love for them. But as they realize where they want their lives to go, I just don't see how these two can make it work. I want them to. Yeah. I mean, I agree. Because there are people you can connect emotionally. And there are people you can connect physically. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think they have a more physical connection. Mm-hmm. And I just think personality-wise, they just clash so much. That yeah. I, I'm kind of glad they didn't go that route. So just like keep it to a working relationship. And then everything will be fine. I think I just got lost in that they look so good together. They like do. he they really likes couple. her, and then she finally was like, "I don't want to not see you. I'm sorry if you felt like I wasn't giving you attention." And I'm like, "Yeah, girl," because she never would have said that before, but she reached a moment. I know. And but then, then he's just like, "I can't do this with you." But uh, it was kind of a nice moment. I liked it where it was like the, the pretty girl is kind of coming up to a guy who's always, you know, he's always liked her, and he's just like, "No, I'm putting my foot down. Like I'm not doing yeah. this with you." Crazy girl. She did kind of like 
jerk them around. She did a little bit, you know. Yeah. It's frustrating because it's a simple solution for both. Like, if he could just realize that what she wants is a career. Yeah. You know what I mean? More than being your wife, she would like a career first and she would still love you. Then it's a pretty easy step to be like, oh, we can we can bridge that gap because you guys work together anyway. Yeah. So yeah. she's still there for you 100% of the time pretty much. Um, and for her, if she could articulate what she wants. Yeah. And yeah. again, it's hard if there's not been a forged path, if you don't clearly see what, how other women have handled this road. Um, she did yeah, have a sad line working. in there, like you were saying, where she said, oh, because I'm not worth it. Like, you don't want to put in the time for me. Oh, God. And I couldn't believe that she said that because I was like, whoa. From her, I just mm-hmm. that was such like a heartbreaking moment for me. I was like, yeah. oh man, because she's that was like an extra cherry on top of her really putting herself out there of being like, so you just don't want to spend the time. Like it was her last ditch effort yeah. to be mm-hmm. like, I'm here and ready. And he just still was like, but I'm gonna call you a cab. I kind of liked though how mm-hmm. he said, I can't keep convincing you I'm a nice guy because yeah. she said you won't put the time in. That but- pissed me off oh, really? so much. <laughs> Here's why. <laughs> You don't get to be nice and get a relationship. Like, your niceness does not equate relationship worthiness at all in any way. And he proves that when he goes to hail a cab. I don't need you to hail me a cab. I can (laughs) stick my hand out and a cab will come. You completely don't understand the things she wants as a woman. Mm -hmm. And to me, that was the final nail in the coffin of, like, you just don't understand what this girl wants at all. Um... And yeah, he tried to treat you a nice guy. I know you're a nice guy. I wouldn't have dated you if you were a bad guy. It's not your niceness that is the problem. It's that I want a career too. It made me a little upset. So we'll we'll, we'll <laughs> so leave that topic. Okay. Don't we want to don't get <laughs> upset here. Um, so let's talk a little bit about this whole Gabe finding his new researcher situation. Oh boy, oh, why yeah. is he so why is he so weird and awkward? Is that like he's his character? Because I was so confused. I'm like, am I missing something? Or I didn't just think it was weird and awkward in the beginning. No, right? Yeah. He just seemed like a normal guy and then all of a sudden I'm yeah, like, why what's he get his so deal? Awkward? He's like a mute now. I mean I don't know. <laughs> I look, I think the well, I had a really hard time watching the storyline because it would just made me dislike the men so yes, much yes. in the show. The fact that like you have to vet these people only based on their physical appearance. Not really what their skills are, but like what they look, what's their waist size. I was like, Oh my god. How man, awkward how he... shallow are these men right mm-hmm. now? And it just it was so frustrating to watch because just now, you know, in our present day we mm-hmm. progress so much in the work mm-hmm. f- workplace, which think Thank, Thank God. God, right? Yeah. But it's just so unfortunate because that's how it was back then. Yeah. And just, you know, like they just want someone to look at and someone who's pretty who can maybe type a few words. I definitely right. read Gabe as like the new guy who's trying to fit mm-hmm. in and doesn't fit that. Again, sort typical like 50s, 60s, like strong kind of the Donald Draper types of mad men. Like he'll never fit in with that crowd. So his mm-hmm. goals are to be funny and have the hottest assistant so that he can fit in. And it's just so not his uh, forte. And I think he's still, like, all that awkwardness and nervousness, I don't think that's Gabe. That's Gabe trying to fit into this atmosphere. And it's just, it's not quite working for him. Yeah, I found it a little endearing. Like, it's annoying and then, <laughs> yeah. and then a little racist. Uh, and then, again, kind of charming. You're just like, oh, Gabe, you're going to figure it out. It's going to be okay. <laughs> He was so funny. I thought it was hilarious when he, like, snuck in the Wayside thing because it was so awkward and, like, <laughs> is that your really age or way? Like, he, right. just, he took what the guy said <laughs> so literally yeah. and, like, it was so uncomfortable. But then, obviously, Denise shows up and I guess it was he, he was surprised to see a black woman. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Okay. Because there's we haven't seen any other black woman in the pit so far. Yeah. Um, and I think based off of her she fits the mannerisms of like the white workplace as far as like you know none of the stereotypes that you kind of expect um that are racially motivated and terrible Uh, (laughs) but yeah so I I kind of liked this shocking moment where she was like it's me (laughs) yeah you're just like my ass but and then for him to just not want her to do any yeah I like that switch too because he was like oh no I feel guilty I think he was intentionally sexist and unintentionally racist I think he got caught up and being like oh god what do I do now? And again, I just thought it was cute as he's stepping over his feet. Right. I'm not like, <laughs> You're like no, not cute, Joel. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not cute, but it was in that moment. I'm like, he literally, it's like he couldn't do something. He became mute. He couldn't <laughs> operate. And then he's like, I just got to make phone calls myself. And like, she's not doing anything. Yeah. And I'm just like, it's a simple, can you make phone calls? Like, what is yeah. wrong with you? I just thought that was so weird. I'm like, oh my goodness. What an idiot. Uh, in that moment, yeah. I mean, he's recovered now. <laughs> he's a recovering like, idiot. Yeah, I mean, man. Yeah. I don't know, maybe yeah. I can identify. I've seen people just fully put their foot in their mouth and just be like, 
I don't know how to operate or approach you now because I've said something foolish. Um, and just, it's kind of funny to watch people stumble yeah. in their foolishness. It is. A little I bigger. agree. Yeah. It's entertaining. It was good. He, he did recover. He did. And he yeah. went up and he's like, can you do this for me? And she's like, yes. Like, yeah. like, she just wanted to do something. She wanted to work and yeah. he wasn't. At least he's aware of that. Yeah, yeah. that is he's true. He's very self-aware. That is like true. Her, her attempted an olive branch, like, mallow cup? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> With a C? With a C. Yeah. Take it, maybe? That was good. <laughs> um, so another, I feel like there's a lot of What's his name? Ned. There's a Ned. lot of that whole Ned and Cindy. Yeah. And seeing Cindy oh, being a little... Ned. Move that necklace around. Yes. <laughs> so Ned works down in the caption area mm-hmm. with her. And he he's digging her, right? Oh, yes. Oh, and totally. she's digging him, right? Yeah. Well, That's yeah. It. I yeah. Thought. yeah, especially what Cindy's going through with her own yes. husband, and, and you see going that. after that, like, yeah, maybe you should be with someone who actually likes you. I thought yeah. that was maybe gonna be a kiss. I just don't want it to be Ned, though. Ned seems douchey. He to does, me, and it. I feel like I'm protective of Cindy. Like, yeah, she's such a nice person, and like has a great spirit and attitude about life. Like, I wonder to fight somebody who like actually cares about her instead of like moving from one type of jerk to another. Be careful, Cindy. It's dangerous out there. It is. Yeah, Ned does seem kind of douchey. He, like, straight up in front of the girls talks about how they're pretty much, like, doing all his work for him. Yeah. <laughs> just, like, yeah. admits it. He doesn't care. No, he does do not, not care like at all. Ned. But I also, in that moment, I felt it was a lot of overshadowing because it was that one day we'll be together as his hand is, like, up her yeah. neck. She has, like, a moment, and then it's like, okay, obviously something's going to maybe happen. Gabba yeah, really bit. worked that three-point lighting to make yes. it so romantic. <laughs> right. I was yeah, like, yeah. I see what's happening yeah. here, and I like it a lot. Uh, they really, The communication just through lighting and her being kind of like angelic, yeah. and then he's got all the pooling light behind him, yep. and she's like, oh, magic starry eyes. Mm-hmm. It really worked. My thing with Ned, though, is I think at this point, just because of you see Cindy like not having sex with her husband and him getting yeah. mad, I think at this point, though, it's for her, like the attention of any other guy that's going to kind of make her feel rebellious is what it is. I don't think it's like anything specific about Ned. Mm-hmm. I think it's more of just he's there, he's who I'm around, he's giving me the attention right now. Yeah. yeah. Which is And he makes know, her laugh. Yeah. And she's going through that rough time. So I think I'm curious to where that's gonna go. And yeah. If, like it's gonna be just maybe like a physical... Maybe like they could throw another guy in there and it would yeah, be the same, same thing for her. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So I'm curious about that. I think the last person we got to talk about is Jane and Sam. Yes. Oh, boy. Which, so this big oh thing they're doing with the chairman, they're trying to get him to talk about the FBI or mm-hmm. camp, whatever. And this just goes to show, too, how it's almost the researchers doing, well, it is, mm-hmm. doing all the work, mm-hmm. and the guys just get the credit because... You can tell Sam leaving doesn't feel like he's ready for this sit down at all. Poor and Sam. Jane, but Jane, she knows everything that's happening. So she goes to meet him and maneuvers her way up there. Yeah. Very classy. I love that. Yeah. So good. That just like shows other sides of her that she's not this just Southern Belle, you know. She she will do what she needs to do. Also, she yeah. might be virginal, but she right. is not like pure of heart. Like she can lie and like yes. sneak around and work totally. her way into to rooms when she needs to. Which I like because sometimes like the overly just like a goody two shoes oh, character God. can just get really frustrating because so it's like you know and boring. Yes. It's like one neutral flat line. Exactly. Like, okay, I'm over it. Yeah. So she does that and she gets up there and Sam's pretty much blowing this meeting <laughs> with the chairman. Yeah. And all it took was a little, a little touch. Tap. And he touchy, just touchy. he was it. so yeah, confident. Then. All of a sudden, he was like, "I've got this!" Like a big uh-huh. Superman, the symbol <laughs> on his chest. I was. It was nice to see him, and then yeah. she even was continued to help. Like, yes. I, what I like about this is it shows. Uh, the importance of having two different types of people in the mm-hmm. same room. Like, it's not that Sam couldn't do it, it's just she was able to soften, like, cushion the blow and, like, make an entrance for him so that he was able to do it better. Uh, and she knew, you know, to ask about the children because of her upbringing. I just, it, it just fills my heart with so much joy. This is the kind of content that I'm constantly looking for. And I really like that we get to see uh, women playing, gosh, words come to me, uh, <laughs> uh, vital roles. I, I like their relationship, too, because to me, it seems like he truly does, like, appreciate the work she does. Yeah. And I feel like you don't see that in any of the other partnerships, but I think that 
they work really, really well together. Why are they not together? I know. I know. Yeah. And Why? Like, even that moment in the telephone booth yes, when they physically a, get close. Oh and he's like, God. you're beautiful. You can feel uh, the tension. Oh, he loves her. So so good. Does she love him he back? Does. I can't tell. I don't know, but she she's like, she when she was looking at him in the phone booth, and then she's like, I felt like we just robbed a bank. And then he's like, let's go rob a bank. You know, it was like this whole thing. And her eyes, I felt like, yes, she loves him. But he loves I mean, her. He uh, de- of course, yeah, he does for sure. Because he, he even says it out loud. He's like, well, can your dad tell me how I can get a date with you <gasps> earlier on? Where you're like, okay. Yes. He makes it obvious to her that he likes her. But I wonder if this is not the kind of person she's expected to be with. Yeah. Because yeah. there doesn't seem to be any other reason for them mm-hmm. not, for to, them be not to be together. For them not to be together. That's true. Maybe someone like a little higher up yeah. or something. Well, she comes from a wealthy family. Yeah. And we know yeah. she's in these like upper echelon circles that make him sweat and get really nervous. So yeah. maybe, yeah, definitely. Yeah, because, I mean, her dad buys her you know can you call your dad for a plane ticket so that kind of shows too what her upbringing was like Mm -hmm. but i'm keeping my fingers crossed for that because um i love them together i think they're 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 great great. and i guess oh there's one more thing finn's you see finn kind of in his really work work and home life are not going too well yeah Yeah. and i think you see that a lot and i think that's also going to come into play with him and patty because you see at home he gives his wife zero attention at all, and she's yeah. gorgeous. gorgeous. Yes. And I was like, "Whoa, that's your wife? What's yeah. your problem?" So yeah. I think I think that was. I mean, we only saw a little clim- like glimpse of it at the end. Yeah. But I think that that's going to come into play a lot because in the first two episodes, you see him getting nagged by his assistant. You know, like mm-hmm. you have to see your kids. You have to go home. Like, yeah. That I just want to know what feeling. happened between them because they shut yeah. that stuff down so no quick. quickly. Mm-hmm. Like, there was no like build up mm-hmm. or even kind of like a uh, fake like small talk it went from like so you could come home to like how should i do it like it's just yeah it was so angry and kind of scary mm-hmm. and really heartbreaking the whole like being in the same room but not touching or acknowledging each other that breaks my heart yeah, yeah. it was sad i think we'll see a lot more of that because with finn i feel like that's you know they, i want to see that i story. do too i'm really curious and I don't know, because to me, I love him in the character he has at work. I do, But then yeah. it's weird, because as soon as he got home, I was like, wait, this is not, you know... They right. don't connect. They don't yeah. connect at all. I, I wonder, like, because we because we really don't really know much about her, uh, you know, about her, the, yeah. the wife. It's like, we don't know if she's controlling in this yeah. situation. Mm-hmm. And the fact that maybe because he's a boss at Newsweek, that, like, he likes the power, and maybe he doesn't have the power in, at home. in the home life. Yeah. Like, yeah. I don't know. Uh, so it makes me wonder, well, like, where the disconnect is. Yeah, because yeah. it seemed like with her line where she's like, I was pleasant, su- pleasantly surprised that she could, and then he just, like, immediately cuts her off to where yeah. I'm like, okay, maybe she's a bit of a nag or whatever. Yeah. But like you said, they cut it down, and I'm like, but I don't really know if she's a nag. I'm just going to assume because yeah. that's, like, harsh, that whole moment. It was. <laughs> it was not a pleasant moment, but I think we'll definitely see more of that. And so episode two ends with Patty after she gets dumped pulling out Eleanor's card. Mm-hmm. So this is pretty much, you know, it's going to start it all. Mm-hmm. And we're going to be seeing it in the next, f- you know, few episodes. We're watching two a week, not more. So I guess let's go into some predictions for the next two episodes. And now, oh. your After Buzz TV. Who wants to start? Predictions. I can start. Go for it. Um, I think we are going to get more of... Um, Patty's relationship with her parents, which I'm excited about. Some drama there. Um, Because there's a reason specifically her parents, and her dad especially. There seems to be a lot of tension there. Um, I'm also interested about Patty and uh, uh, Finn's relationship, especially after she goes through with this lawsuit. Mm -hmm. I do not think it's going to be pretty. Yeah, I would like to see more of Patty Patty and, and Finn, just off that. I was like, yeah, I feel like they might get closer. Even though she's with someone, he's with someone, I feel like they might try to milk that relationship and really, like, to where eventually, I don't know, I'll make a guess, episode how many are there? Ten, ten, like, yeah. I'm going to say episode eight. Mm, Something whoa. goes down. Whatever. Mm. I'm just throwing that out there. <laughs> I like it. Yeah, <laughs> definitely think Eleanor is going to play a big part. Oh, yes. Um, and all this, and she's going to be another voice that goes down there and, like, stirs things up, and that's going to get crazy as mm-hmm. well. And, uh, yeah, I definitely think Jane's going to lose her virginity. Yeah! Oh, <laughs> yeah. Sam. Yeah. Uh-uh. Sam. And that's going to happen, and I think Cindy might cheat on her husband with Ned. 
Yeah. Yes. That, that one, one too. <laughs> I think that's gonna happen. I, I definitely think that Finn and Patty are gonna happen at some point, but it will be very interesting with the lawsuit. Because I definitely yes. think that there's like a sexual yeah. tension there, but like but with that, it's hard. It'll be weird. I also think that Doug is maybe gonna start seeing someone else at work, mm -hmm. and I think it's gonna kill Patty. Yeah, the brunette girl with the snacks. Yes, I think that like he's gonna start <laughs> seeing someone. Yes. yes, she was she was definitely She's pulling a move by giving him whatever. Like a clue yeah. answer. The brunette yeah. girl with the snacks. <laughs> yes. Put away. But yeah, I and think she's if. gonna get super jealous and be really upset, and I think yeah. he's gonna do it kind of despite her. Yes. I don't think it's going to be like a genuine thing. Did so. he say boring sounds good these days? It's like, don't yeah. do this, dude. It's terrible. Do it. right. Well, I guess that's all I got. But that That's was... a good one. Yep. Yeah. Well, that's the end of our first panel. Yay. So much fun. We're going to be covering, like I said, two episodes each week. So next week we will be here doing episodes three and four. But in the meantime, you can chat with all of us on Twitter, comment on the YouTube. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at underscore Abby Vega. Where can they find you guys? You can follow me on Twitter at Serafini TV. Hey guys, I'm Joel Monique. You can find me all over the internet at Joel Monique and every week at BlackGirlNerds.com. Head over to BlackGirlNerds.com right now to see my review of Doctor Strange. Sweet. You guys can find me on YouTube, YouTube.com backslash Tara Erickson or follow me on Twitter at the Tara Erickson. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you like, subscribe, <laughs> comment, all the fun stuff, and we will see you next week. Bye. Bye. From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz, Buzz you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.